This is a brief introduction to Model Builder using a couple of raster tools. So we have here a couple of input data sets that we're going to use for our modeling. One is the uh, a data set of grocery stores in the city of Toronto, and the other are Toronto neighborhoods. So the first thing we have to do is create a toolbox, which is really just a, a container or a place to store the model that we're going to create. Um, there's various ways to do this. The simplest way that uh, you might want to get started is to create it inside an existing file geodatabase. I can just right click and select new toolbox and you can just think of this uh, it's very similar to a, a, a folder in Windows. It's just a, a place to store something or to organize the tools that you're going to use. Um, you can name it whatever you want so I'm just gonna call it demo. Very imaginative. Now that we have our demo toolbox, which, uh, like I said, is just a container, and right now there's nothing in it, we can right-click inside or on the, the demo toolbox and select New Model. And this will bring up the Model window, which is, uh, I like to think of it as a, a blank canvas or a place to get started to, to create a new model. And one of the nice things about this is that you can drag and drop data sets and tools onto this in order to start building your model really quickly and easily. If I drag grocery onto there, it automatically now recognizes that as a data set that can be used as an input for modeling. I can then go here to the Spatial Analyst tool set and under distance we have a tool called Euclidean distance. And if I drag that onto the model builder window, you'll see that it has now created a tool for Euclidean distance to be used in the model, but it's not filled in with a color yet, which means that it does not yet know what data sets to use as input or what parameters have been set for it. We can easily do this by connecting a line from grocery to Euclidean distance and specifying that we're going to use that as an input raster. And then we just and you'll notice, by the way, that it start, it's already filled in because now it knows what uh, input data set to use. And now we can just double click on the Euclidean Distance tool, and this will bring up exactly the same dialog box that you would get if you were using the Euclidean Distance without Model Builder, just doing it interactively uh, using one tool at a time. So it's automatically selected Grocery as the input because I connected Grocery to that tool and it's um, automatically created an output. I can change the name for this if I want. Um, it's automatically created a, a short version of Euclidean Distance Grocery 1. I'm not going to specify a maximum distance. In other words, I want it to, to go out um, to wherever it thinks is best. And I can specify an input cell size. My data sets are in UTM, which means that they are using meters as coordinates. So um, the output cell size is also in meters, and I can specify this to be whatever I want. Let's say I'm going to make it 25 meters. I'm not going to specify an output direction raster. It's not really uh, needed or useful for this particular type of analysis. I click OK, and so now we have an input data set. We've set our parameters, and we could run this. Uh, just before I do that, though, a couple of little tips is that you can click the auto layout to kind of clean up or reorganize um, the model so it looks a little nicer and you can also zoom to the full extent of the uh, so that it displays the model at full extent inside the window. I just tend to do this as a habit just to kind of keep things organized. So you'll notice that it still has an, uh, an unfilled oval for output direction raster, but that's an option. That's something I chose not to use, so we don't have to worry about that. We can just leave it not filled in like that. So now our model is ready to run. We can validate the model by selecting validate entire model here, and that just goes through and makes sure that we have specified everything correctly, and it turns out that we have, and then we can run the model. We can either run it from the model uh, menu says run entire model or just run whichever and you can also use that same symbol the little uh, blue triangle on the menu bar below you'll notice that the Euclidean distance tool has turned red because that means it's actually executing that particular tool And if you have a large model you can follow it through each of the tools in the model to see which ones are being processed at any particular time 
it's now calculating the Euclidean distance and in a moment it'll be finished and we'll have a nice um, raster distance measure for our grocery stores. So it's now completed. We can close the um, the model window there that tells us how it's doing, the status window. And you'll notice that there's now a drop down shadow or drop shadow uh, under the Euclidean distance tool and the output, which means that the model has run and it has created a new output data set. So this has not been added to the map automatically. I can right click on the output and say add to display. And so now we have our output added to our map. So if we, uh, let's see, turn off our neighborhoods for a moment. Now we can see the grocery stores and the distances um, away from them. Now this has just been classified for the sake of symbology automatically, but we actually have um, a range of distances, one for each cell, calculated away from each of these points. And I should point out too, by the way, that um, ArcMap is very good at working interchangeably between vector and raster. So even though the points are vector, it's uh, using them as an input for a raster tool, which is great. Okay, so now we can add on to our model. Let's say, for example, that we wanted to calculate the average distance to a grocery store for each neighborhood in the city of Toronto. This might be useful for us. So we can drag our neighborhood data onto our model and we're going to calculate a zonal statistic for that. And so what we're going to do is take the output of a Euclidean distance and use that as our input for our zonal statistic. So we'll tell it that it's going to be an input value raster and we're also going to use the neighborhoods for our zonal statistic to specify those as the um, the zones that will be used. So now we have, I'll just make this a little larger. We've built on our model very easily. You can see the result of that there. And I'll specify the parameters for the zonal statistic. I'll just double check these here. So our neighborhood is going to be our um, zones. It's def defining the zones. And again, we're using a, uh, a vector polygon file or feature class for our zones. We could be using raster just as easily. It just so happens that this is already vector data, so I'll leave it that way. The zone field is object ID. That just means that each, what we want in this case, is for each polygon to be treated as a separate zone. And because the object IDs are unique, this will ensure that each polygon, each neighborhood, is treated as its own feature. <clears throat> the input value raster is the distance, uh, Euclidean distance that we calculated from the grocery store. So this, this is the data that's going to be calculated inside each zone. It's going to create our output, which again, I'm just going to leave it as the default name. And uh, I wanted to calculate the average or the mean, and it's already selected that. I could select something else, but for now, we'll just go with the mean. So we say OK. And so now we have our model ready to go. So we can click Run. Now the zonal statistics are being calculated for each neighborhood to calculate the average Euclidean distance for each of the polygons. It's just wrapping up here. And it's been completed. Now we can close that. You see we have a drop shadow here for zonal statistics. And if we look at, we'll add this to the display. And now if we look at our result, this is the average distance for each of the neighborhoods. Now this is a raster function, um, the zonal statistic. So uh, let's just make it something a little more colorful so it's easier to see. Uh, let's take something like this just for kicks and we will invert that. And so now you can see that the uh, the areas in blue are relative, have an average 
distance that's close to a grocery store or, or low average distance. And as the w colors get warmer towards the yellows, greens, yellows, and reds, you're getting a higher average distance. So this might be used for accessibility or some other type of analysis. So that's basically it. That's uh, a way of being able to build a model. Uh, you create a, a toolbox, you put a model inside of it, you can drag and drop tools and functions, you specify the parameters, connect them up, and away you go. If we uh, wanted to, we could rerun this model, we could change the parameters, run it again, uh, but I think that's worked pretty well. So hopefully this gives you a, a brief overview of how Model Builder works and uh, you can give it a try on your own.